Back in the 70s, I loved going to Berman's house. We would lay out these little rubber toy soldiers all over his dad's pool table. And we put them in strategic positions and then hit the pool ball to try to, you know, knock out the flank or beat the battalion. Uh, so I guess it made sense that at some point we'd plan a World War II themed trip. And 50 years later, that's exactly what we did. The reason I gotta it see took this a little guy. bit longer for no, this look at you. To get you got your tags on. If you drop, I know exactly where to what to do with you. The semi tractor to get you up here. That's what took so long. And settling in. You settling in okay, Berm? Yep. You need a sandwich? Okay. You doing alright? I'm doing tremendous. Okay. Show me the lake thing. I think you get a lot of room well, there. I can I can lay I can like lay down like this. Look at this. Yeah. I can like lay down. Very exciting. This is Mike Hennessy over here. Hi Mike. You doing alright? You got a pillow? Show me some of the convenience. Yeah, go ahead. You got everything, Bob. Okay. <laughs> and there's Mr. Lou. Hey Mr. Lou. What, what kind of soup are you eating there, Dodd? Look, it's a lovely, like, chili uh, chicken base, like, uh, pepper. It's lovely. Good. Burrata? Burrata. That's good. <laughs> good. <laughs> yep, yeah. You need a sandwich? Yes, I flew into Heathrow. And I just walked to the hotel. It's amazing. It was my. It was like just to see everybody in London all together, guys that I've known my whole life. It was an amazing, amazing feeling. It woke me right up, even though I was severely jet lagged. Birthday, dear Jeff and Coney. Happy birthday to Mr. Lou and Coney. Just talking to Scott about the women of war in World War II. Scott um, asked the question oh, no, that I want to... <laughs> it wasn't actually a question. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll, this guy thinks your grandmother did nothing on the war. <laughs> Yeah.
going to the Churchill War Museum, learning about Churchill. He was the one, probably most important person of the 20th century. He was the one who stood up when no one else would and stood up to Hitler when everyone else was caving in. So, you know, he, we have a lot to owe him. So it was great to see my great friends at a great place. We have a stud crossing here. Stud number one, okay. Stud number one, keep going, keep going. There he is, two, there's number two, three, four, and five. There we go. Stud number two is engaged. Stud, stud number two plus one. This is our property in France. That's our minivan. And this is our house. Bonjour, Chef Matthew. And that's Todd. And that's... Coming through the backyard here, we're gonna have dinner out here that Chef Matthew's gonna make for us. And it's a beautiful day. It's beautiful to see you riding a bicycle and exercising and So there is no more roof over there. Oh, to hit that, and then that's it. You look at the side there, the blast, it clearly is from behind. That's it. Yeah. 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 Oh, right over there. Just a flash for them. Going out to the overlook of Omaha Beach, and uh, it was a very emotional moment. Todd was there wearing his father's dog tags from 80 years ago. And I didn't quite realize how impactful that would be until we we're all standing on this bluff and Todd sort of wandered closer to the edge away from the rest of us and seemed to be standing quietly alone. And one after the next, we uh, wandered over to where Todd was and found out that he was having a very emotional moment reflecting on Ray Crouch stormed those beaches back in World War II. Um, and it was a beautiful part of the trip to hear the French in that area, still after all these years, um, just complimenting Americans about the impact that they had on the French culture. And that without our involvement and the involvement of guys like Ray Crouch, that, uh, France, quoting from our tour guide, might be speaking Russian today if, uh, if those guys had not come in and uh, helped win World War II.
after an amazing time in Normandy, we headed into Paris. Then immediately went for a metro ride so we could have a corner bistro lunch and visit another World War II museum. With perfect weather, we ended up walking back most of the way through one of the most beautiful parks in Paris. That night was our final dinner before some of us went back home and some went to Sicily for a few more days to finish out the trip. So we ended in style by going to La Perouse, a renowned restaurant in an historic mansion on the Seine. Starting with drinks in the downstairs bar, followed by an incredible dinner, we closed the night out with some big thank yous and some heartfelt speeches, celebrating our long-standing years of friendship and incomparable bond that is so rare and still as strong as ever. Personally, I wanted to let every one of these guys know how lucky I've been to have had them in my life. Through the ups, through the downs, and everything in between, we have always been there for each other, and it has truly been a blessing. And with immeasurable appreciation and gratitude, it is not something I will ever take for granted. As I said at La Perouse, to my lifelong friends, my band of brothers, I can't tell you what a great blessing all of you are in my life. I'm a regular guy and I walk among giants. I love all of you. It was a perfect dinner and a perfect trip. We're supposed to head out to Sicily on May 21st, but we were receiving reports of unusually stormy weather. After much discussion about diverting to another country, we decided to stay the course and SEAL Team 4 flew to Palermo the next day. Our evenings in Sicily were spent in the Vucheria section of Palermo, which is just blocks and blocks of Italian cafes and bars, and we ate amazing Italian food and drank great wine. Sicily was unforgettable. Seal Team 4. Seal Team 4. <laughs> Wait, I didn't see what happened before. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Ah, God. The Sicily segment of our trip was all about self-exploration rather than guided tours. We spent Monday, May 22nd, exploring Scopella. When, when, does, when does Palermo get busy for the summertime? Yeah. Is it is it starting now? Uh, yes, yes. Now is the week. This, 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 this is, is the week, week huh? Okay. Oh, Mickey. Here we go. Two. Two. Go, Mickey, go! Go, oh. Go, Bastard! Bastard, you! Go, oh, Mickey! Oh, my God! Have you ever seen this? He's almost 70. This guy's gonna be, he's, he's, he's gonna be 70 in November. No. I'm six years old. Six six zero. Six zero six zero. Six zero six zero. Not six six.
Hey Bobo, it's Bernie. You know, it's been over six months since we took the trip. And almost every day, some way in my life, that trip comes back to me. And I think about us coming together, quest for history, culture, and just hanging out. And I think about those moments of us being together and experiencing the past and our memories of the past and memories of the world's past. And what I realized when I got on that plane to fly home the next morning is in our way, we are a band of brothers and we are lucky. We're lucky to have each other. We are lucky to have our past and we are lucky to have our future. I love you, Baba.